God bless everybody. Yaqwa Abaya Baraka. Amen. Rada. Amen. You know, I'm just excited because um, we're trying to get trying to get my coffee in here, but you know, um, uh, I think we just hit seven o'clock on the nose, and I know that you are tuning in uh, from everywhere. Uh, about ten minutes ago, God bless all of you again. Um, about ten minutes ago, I got a message that says, "I'm waiting on the word of faith." And of course, you know who, who, who I tell my wife, I said, you know who that is, you know. She said, who is that? I said, waiting on the word of faith? I said, that's Ambassador Zelma Bowen. She said, oh yeah, up in Toronto, Canada, and the crew that's up there. And, uh, and we're ready for the word of faith. I just want to uh, say, I want to thank Sister Angela, Minister Angela Selvin, who's in, I believe, Victoria, British Columbia, uh, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your support on this week, and we want to thank you for your prayers, uh, Sister Angela, uh, your kindness, and of, of course, uh, we want everybody to know that Ambassador Zelma Bowen is is winning people and talking to people and bringing people to our broadcast. So we want to say thank you so much. Uh, we're so honored uh, that so many of you watched my wife on last Sunday. Uh, on, in her message, don't turn back. And I'm starting for the month of March. And I know, I know it's February 28th. It's the last day of February. But I'm starting the message, I know who I am. Uh, I was uh, studying um, the pyramids. And I've been studying the pyramids ever since the 70s. Uh, of course, my friend uh, Maurice White of Earth, Wind & Fire had a chance to go to Egypt. And, um, and was able to share some of the pyramid knowledge in the Great Pyramids, one of the greatest mysteries uh, that uh, ever has been um, created are the pyramids. In the top of, I think it's Gaza, one of the pyramids in Egypt, it says, know thyself. And, and that's what it says. But I mean, one of them, I mean, they can't tell you I think I, I was told that this pyramid is so perfectly shaped that when the sun hits it, it does not cast a shadow. I'm told that the, that the, that the stones on this pyramid weigh 360 tons and they're perfectly straight. I mean, it looks like the Washington Monument. Um, I mean, so perfectly straight. But when you enter into the Great Pyramid, it says, Know thyself. And I think that one of the problems that, uh, that the church has uh, and that a lot of people in church uh, don't know who they are. Uh, the Bible tells us who we are, but I don't think, we, I don't think that we have put it into practice yet. And, and as an apostle of God, um, along with my wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummings, uh, our job is to motivate you empower you. Our ministry is a ministry of empowerment. And so we want you to be empowered to the point that as the scripture says, and I want, I want to share what I wrote today on Facebook, I know who I am. The Bible says it, and, I, and it's not just me talking, but it says that as Christ is, so are we in the world. As Christ is, so are we in the world. The Bible calls Christ or Jesus the Christ. It says that he is the wisdom of God and he is the power of God wrapped up in human form. So he is, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God wrapped up in human form. In the book of First John, Chapter number uh, four. Go ahead. First John chapter number four and verse number 17. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the time of trouble. Your Bible may say in the day of judgment, but it's really in the Hebrew understanding of the scripture, is in the time of trouble. We may have boldness. You know, that we're supposed to be with the boldness come from confidence. 
And the confidence comes from knowing who you are and who's backing you. Good God Almighty. And who's living on the inside of you. And so you don't have to be intimidated by nobody. Because the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of intimidation. Your Bible says, my God, my, your Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. But fear is intimidation. But he has given us the spirit of love because God is love. He has given us the spirit of power. Amen. And wisdom, a sound mind, wisdom. And so we need to, we need to really see what we have. And who we are, as the great pyramids in Egypt says, know thyself. That's all it said. Know thyself. Before entering in the, the massive uh, miracle uh, structure of the pyramids, it says, know thyself. And the only way that you can know yourself, you got to know your God. Because you're made in his image and after his likeness. And you are blessed. Baraka is the word. You hear me say it all the time. Baraka in Hebrew and Aramaic, it means blessed and empowered to prosper. Empowered for success. Amen. Empowered for victory. Baraka is all of that. And so when you know who you are, you're not intimidated by men or women or things and stuff. You know, no. For God has not given us the spirit of intimidation, but he has given us the spirit, hey, love, wisdom, and power. And that's what the Bible, and that's how Bi the Bible describes Christ as the wisdom of God and the power of God wrapped up in human form. So the scripture says in 1 John chapter number 4 and verse number 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the time of trouble. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Well, he says, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. And, and if we imitate him, you know, he said, he that imitates me or he that follows me, will no longer walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. And then the same Messiah, Jesus, he tells us who we are. He says, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that other men shall see your good works and give God the glory. Amen. So, and I've been teaching you Exactly what I've taught all over the world for 17 years as an evangelist. The light of the world means you are the eliminators of darkness. Can I say that again? If I am the light of the world, and I do claim to be the light of the world because the Messiah said, you are the light of the world. So if I'm the light of the world and you are the light of the world, that means we eliminate darkness just like uh, light, when it comes on, it eliminates darkness. Darkness disappears. Darkness leaves the room. Some say, well, the darkness is still in the room, but you can't even tell it because you are the light, because you turn the lights on. And so we want to know who we are. Amen. As I said before, he said, you are the light of the world. Then another scripture, not too, not right after that, he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the preservers. Amen. You're the caretakers. Amen. Amen. You, you keep it alive. You keep it alive. You, you, because he made this earth for you. Uh -huh. All 196,940,000 square miles, he made it for you. That word is Radah. I told you Adam lost it. But the Messiah comes to seek and to save that which was lost. And the word save in Greek is sozo. Amen. And the word save in, in Hebrew is yashcha. Save means to bring man back to the starting point, to the genesis, to the very beginning. Christ came to give us back the dominion, give us back the power, give us back um, uh, to be able to replenish the earth. Amen. Uh, to spread the 
kingdom of God throughout the whole world. And that's why I love coming on on Thursday nights. And we love preaching on Sunday morning because we know what we're doing. We're building back what was lost. We're bringing back what was lost through the word because we live in a word created world. You create your world by the words that come out of your mouth. Your words are so powerful. People can say things and hurt your feelings and, 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 uh, and cause you to stumble. Or people can say things that encourage you, that motivate you, that empower you. Our ministry at Shabbat Global Ministries headquarters in Kankakee, Illinois, it is a ministry of empowerment. Amen. To show you your possibilities, your capabilities, and what you can do and what you can have and what you don't have to take from the devil no more because his time has expired. And his time expired based on knowledge, based on wisdom. The Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So if you have knowledge, you can never be destroyed, but you become the executor Amen. Of the plan of God, of the will of God. Amen and amen and amen. So Matthew 5 and 17 tells me and you who we are. You are the light of Christ to the world. You are the eliminators of darkness. Amen. You were put here, as I was listening to Pastor Chris today in Nigeria. He said, our job is to reveal... And I said it before I heard him. But it's true. Our job is to reveal Christ in the earth. Amen and amen. That's what our job is. As citizens of the kingdom of God, when people see us, they should see Jesus. When people hear us, they should hear Jesus. When people uh, come to know us, they should come to know Jesus because we are the revealers of him in the earth. If you want to know what a Christian really is, a Christian is one who can reveal God in the earth. Amen. They act like God, talk like God, walk like God. Amen. I'm telling you, and that's our job. Amen. That's why we have influence in the world. That's why people, when they hear us, they want to hear more because they're hearing something that they're not getting in the traditional church or they're not getting in the traditional wherever they go to worship at. Amen and amen. I am loved by God. Listen to me. You are loved by God. In the book of Jeremiah, I love the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 31 and verse number 3, listen to what it says. Jeremiah, I say, I am loved by God. Amen. Come on, say it again. Say, I am loved by God. Now, let me show you in the Bible that you are the I am that is loved by God. In Jeremiah, chapter number 31, Verse number three, the Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Come on. He loves you. I used, to, I used to know a song called Everlasting Love. But he says, I have loved you. Come on. God says, I love you. And the thing about when God says, I love you, he ain't like people. People can love you today, hate you tomorrow. Come on. With you today and gone tomorrow. Come on. He, he, his love is unconditional love. His love in the Greek is called agape love. Amen. He said, I loved you. Think about it, Ambassador Joe Thomas. God said, I love you. Think about it, Sister Tia. God said, I love you with an everlasting love. I loved you before you knew I loved you. I loved you. Come on, talk back to me. I loved you before you even knew me. I loved you. I loved you while I was forming you in the womb of your mother. I loved you with an everlasting love. That means even before you were born, he said, I loved you. Amen, amen. He knew that one day you would wake up and get to know him and see in the scripture that he loves you. And he says in Jeremiah, come on, got to go back to that. Jeremiah 31 and verse number 3 the Lord has appeared unto me of old, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you to me. Come on, you're a child of God. God drew you with loving kindness. 
God loved you with an everlasting love. So I know who I am. First of all, I am loved by God. I am the light of the world. I am the eliminators of darkness. I am empowered by the God that loves me. And as he is, so am I in this world, according to uh, the Bible now, according to the Bible. As he is, so am I in this world. Good God Almighty. So, I am loved by God. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 15. Come on, listen to what the word of God said. I'm talking about I know who I am. And because I know who I am, I, I have a boldness. Amen. I have the boldness of God, the boldness of Christ. Amen. I have the boldness of Daniel. I have the boldness of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I have the boldness of David. Amen and amen. So we, we're bold. We're not arrogant. We're bold. Amen and amen. In Romans chapter number 8, verse number 15, Looking at it in the Amplified Version, it says, it says, For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading again to fear. See, we have the spirit of Christ. The Bible says in the same uh, book of Romans, If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Amen and amen. The spirit, the attributes, the character. Amen. Um, the life of Christ. Amen. He don't belong to Christ. He said, for you are, you have not received, I'm in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 15 through 17. For you have not received the spirit of slavery again to fear. Good God of mine. He says, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. The spirit of producing sonship by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. You've been hearing me say, Abba, Yah. Well, Abba, Yah is, God is my Father. I know who I am. That's why I can say Abba, Yah. People that don't understand Abba, it's in the Bible, if you're into the page, y'all. If you look in Romans chapter number 8, and look at verse number 15 through 17, in, even in the King James Version, it says, we cry Abba, A-B-B-A, -B -B -A, but Yah is God. Abba Yah, God is my Father. The Spirit Himself testifies and confirms together with our Spirit, assuring us that we, the believers, are the children of God. Hey, who am I? I am a child of God. I am a son of God. Amen. I am an heir of God. It's in the Bible if you're into the page out. And we need to start acting like who we are. If we say, I mean, just like the police officer, he says, I am the police. Well, I look at him and I can see the authority because he's got on a badge. Good God Almighty. Well, we have a badge too. Amen. We have been deputized by God. Amen. And by his spirit. Amen. To act like, walk like, look like, come on, um, fight like God. Amen. And we don't fight physically. We fight with words. Our words is God. And our words has the power to change our situation overnight. Because we live in a word-created world. And you create your world by the words you speak out of your mouth. Amen. Because according to the Bible... In Proverbs 18 and verse number 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Another translation for death and life is failure and victory is in the power of your tongue. So death is failure. Come on. Death is dead. Amen. But life is victory. Life is power. Life is the anointing of God. Life comes from the Messiah. Amen. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So again, we need to know who we are. So he said, the Spirit himself, in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, 16 and 17, he said, the Spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us, that we, the believers, are the sons and daughters of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs uh, also. Wait a minute. We are the heirs of God? 
Say, I am an heir of God. Amen. If I am an heir of God, that means I have inherited something from God. I have inherited his attributes. I have inherited his spirit. I have inherited his power. I even have inherited his name. I have, and I can use his name. Yahweh, Abiyah, Baraka, Ra. I can use his name because I'm an heir, just like my wife and my children and those that I that are my heirs. I mean, um, they can take my my uh, my. They have my name. My wife is Dr. Glory Maria Cummings. She's an heir. She has my name. Amen. You are an heir of God, according to Romans chapter number eight and verse number seventeen. You have His name. And when he, and that's why he said, if you ask anything according to my name, he said, I'll do it. Ask anything in my name. Now, if you look at the word name, you look, in, you look at the word N-A-M-E, and in that word, listen to me, here comes a mystery. In that word, name is amen. It's just turn it around and look at it. Whenever you say his name, you're saying amen. You're saying so be it. Amen. You're saying it shall happen. You're saying it shall come to pass. Because his name is his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So in his name. You, as an heir of God, you have the power, you have the authority, you have the privilege to pray in his name. And what has happened is that religion has changed the name over and over and over again. They changed the language over and over and over again so that you can't even know what his name is. Amen. I'm, I'm like this. Call me out of my name. I don't have to answer you. And, we, and it's time that we know him. According to the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse number 6 in the Amplified Version. Listen to what it says. I didn't mean to go there. But since I'm there, I might as well go on and tell it. In Isaiah 52 and verse number 6, look at it in the Amplified Version. He prophesies through the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 52 and verse number 6, he said, Therefore, my people shall know my name. He didn't say everybody going to know it. He said, my people shall know my name, and they shall know what my name means. It's in the Bible if you enjoy the page, y'all. I know, I know most of y'all have never seen it, but if you go to Isaiah 52 and verse number 6, and look in it at the Amplified Translation, it said, therefore, my people shall know my name. Amen. In that day, they shall know that I am, that's his name, Hebrew Yahweh. The word Yahweh, Y-H-W-H is I am. And God said, you're going to know his name. And I'm here to teach you his name. So that when you say his name, all of the universe and the angels bow down to your requests. Amen. Angels, Asiel, Mikael, Raphael. Come on, come on. They're all, they're all the L's. Amen and amen. And so... We, that's why as an heir of God, you, once you understand that you are an heir of God, then God begins to show you things like Isaiah 52 and verse number 6 in the Amplified Version where he says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. In that day, they shall know what it means. In Isaiah 52 and verse number 6, he said, Not only are you going to know his name, but you're going to know what it means. Amplified Version. Go look at it. I ain't making it up. I'm teaching you. What we don't learn in theology school. What we don't learn in most of our churches. I'm teaching you. I spent 40 something years of study that I may teach this. I studied uh, Arabic. I studied Hebrew. I've been to Jerusalem. I preached at the Sea of Galilee. I stood on the Mount of Olives. Come on. In 1991. And I've come. God has kept me alive. All of these years that I may share the, the hidden mysteries of Christ. Amen. That you may come to know who you are. 
Who does God say that you are? That he loves you. I am loved by God. I am bold because he is bold. He don't back down from a fight. David didn't back down from the fight. And David was only about five feet five. And, and Goliath was nine feet nine and weighed 990 pounds. But David had no fear. He even wrote the 23rd Psalm based on his confrontation with Goliath. He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That was in the valley of Elah. The valley of Elah and Goliath's shadow, who was nine feet nine and weighed 990 pounds. David was walking in the shadow of Goliath. And he said, yea, do I walk through the valley, Elah, of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God hadn't given him the spirit of fear. But God gave him wisdom and power and a sound mind. He said, I will fear no He said, for thou art with me. He said, God is with me. Here's a God that say, I love you, and he not with you in the time of trouble. The Bible told me, call upon me in the time of trouble, and I will answer you. The Bible tells me many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. It is time to wake up and know who you are and what you have. Amen. From what I read on, on, on last week, all things are yours. I am indeed, we share in battles with God. Amen. As a child of God, you're going to have battles. It's mandatory that you exercise your faith. And so you'll have uh, sparring, sparring partners. Somebody trying to intimidate you. Somebody trying to put fear on you. Somebody trying to get you to act like they act. I don't have to act like they act. I'm going to act like God. Since I'm an heir of God, I'm going to act like my heir. I'm going to act like I'm an heir. If I'm an heir of God, I have inherited God's wisdom, God's power, God's victory. Amen. God's anointing. And the anointing of God destroys every yoke. The devil is defeated, and the devil is a liar, and Christ is the Messiah. Amen. And he dwells in us. Look at it. Hey, Y'all all right? Amen. And amen. It said, if we indeed share in his suffering, that means the trials and tribulations that we have to go through, he said, so that we may also share in his glory, his glory, his baraka, his yasha, his baraka, his blessings. Uh, Y'all all right? Revelations chapter number five and verse number 10. It tells me I am a pillar in his kingdom. I'm a pillar in his kingdom and been made kings and priests and we shall reign on this earth. And the earth, listen to me, the earth is our throne and heaven is our home. Yes, right. This earth is our throne. Get God Almighty. And heaven is our home. Our origin, take your back some. Our origin was heaven. Amen. And God made us a body. Amen. Our origin was heaven. It's in the Bible, if you're in total base, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 7. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return to God who gave it. You are a spirit living in a body having an on-earth experience. Amen and amen. So the body will go back to the earth, but they can't kill the devil or nobody can kill your spirit. Amen and amen. That's why, I'm, that's why people say, I'm just like my father. I'm just like my grandfather. I'm just like my great-great-grandfather -grand, because I have the spirit. I have the anointing of them on my life, and some of you are the same way. You have the spirit of your ancestors. You have the spirit of your ancestors. Amen and amen. So that's why people can't figure out and figure you out because they got the spirit of theirs and theirs may not have come to know the Christ that you have come to know or the God that you have come to know. Hey, I am. All of this is mine. The whole earth belongs to me and you. 196,940,000 square miles. It's in Deuteronomy. 
Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter number 11 and verse number 25. Deuteronomy 11, 25. King James, he said, every place where on the sole of your feet shall tread on shall be yours. Uh, <laughs> every, you ain't no stranger. You ain't no stranger. You are an heir of God. And so, I, look, he said, every place, every place, where does that leave us? If God said, every place, where on the sole of your feet shall tread on shall be yours as long as you go in there acting like God, as an heir of God, as a light of the world. Come on, every place. That don't leave out no place. That's why he says in the, in the New Testament, all things are yours. Because he says in Deuteronomy 11.25, every place. Where on the sole of your feet shall tread on shall be yours. That's what David knew. When he faced Goliath in the valley of, e of Elah, David said, hey, this is mine. I got this. Because he knew the word. And when you know the word, you're not intimidated. No, I don't care where you go. You can go into the worst neighborhood on the planet. It becomes yours. Bill Winston was telling us about how uh, this lady... Uh, came to his church when he had a little storefront. And she said, are you the pastor? He said, I'm the pastor. She said, well, we, my son is being intimidated by the drug dealers that's going on in my block. Bill Winston, some of y'all may laugh at this. Bill Winston said, take this oil and sprinkle it down on the, on the road where they hang out at. And he said, that should take care of the problem. By faith, that woman took that oil, spread it on the sidewalk, and came back to the church and said, you know, the drug dealers are gone. They left yesterday. Well, that's, that's because where you reside, let me say this again, where you reside and whatever area you are in, it becomes your jurisdiction. Amen. Wherever you walk, it becomes your jurisdiction. Wherever you work, it becomes your jurisdiction. Amen. Wherever you live, even if it's an apartment, you're the landlord. You're the real landlord. Because if it wasn't for you, the place would burn down. Oh, I know. I know who I am. You either, wherever you go, you're going to build it up. Amen. You're going to get rid of all the dirt, all the grind. You're going to get rid of all the demons, all the devils, and then build. You're going to clean house. And then we build. All right. Deuteronomy 11.25. Every place is in the Bible. Claim it. Claim it. Every place. Where on the sole of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Even unto the utmost sea shall be your coast. Then he tells you in verse 25. There shall no man. No man be able to stand before you. Stand against you. No man. No man, no one man. He said, there shall no man be able to, as long as you hang in there with your godly character, knowing who you are with the boldness and confidence and speak like the God that lives inside of you. He said, no man will be able to stand before you. For the Lord, your God, shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon. As he has said unto you. He said, that's why when David faced Goliath, hey man and amen, the, the valley of Elah that he faced Goliath in, it's good God it's Almighty, it's wherever he, what he faced Goliath in, he, David, knew with his five feet self. And Goliath was 999 pounds and nine feet tall. David said, this is my jurisdiction. And he said, so listen, listen to David. I'm not dumb. I'm going to close early tonight. In 1 Samuel, chapter number 17, and verse number 34, David moreover said, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the bear, and out of the paw, he will deliver me out of the hand of this ungodly Philistine. He was telling the king, amen, he was telling the king, the Lord that delivered me. And I'm telling you, if you are a child of God, you already know what deliverance is like. You've been delivered before from stuff before. Good God, I've been delivered from death. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, uh, what, what, what was the date, baby, I was delivered from death? Uh, August the 7th, 2017. Yeah. Died in the bowling alley. I died in the bowling alley. Now, do I look like somebody that's been dead? No. God raised me from the dead in the bowling alley, and the doctors to this day don't understand how did I survive with, uh, with blood clots, massive blood clots on both of my lungs. Amen and amen. Because of a word. Because of the Holy Spirit. Because of a God that loves me. And a woman that loves me. And said, come on, Jeremiah. You got too much work to do. Come on, Jeremiah. And I got up. And they found two blood clots. Two massive blood clots on both of my lungs. And I should have stayed dead. But God raised me from the dead. And now that God done raised me up from the dead, the devil is in trouble. Oh, yes. I got him. Amen. He is done. Over. And I'm going to preach this word and empower you uh, and so that you can understand I am an heir of God. You are an heir of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. And we are loved by God. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness have I drawn you. If you've been drawn to God, it was his loving kindness that drew you. Even to this broadcast tonight. Even seeing me tonight. It is the love of God that had you tune in tonight. Because you need a word. You need a word of empowerment. You need a word of victory. Come on, talk back to me. Now, he said, for the Lord, David says in 1 Samuel 17 and 37, he said, for the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from this Goliath. And Saul said unto David, David, go, and the Lord be with you. The personality of David, the personality of David is a picture of that of a true believer. In the face of danger and intimidation, David's backdrop was the word of God. And he was inspired to write Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise up against me. In this will I be confident. Why could we talk like that? Because, hey man, because we know who we are and we know who's backing us. Our enemies has no idea of the power and the relationship we have backing us with our God. I'm going to say that again. Our enemies and our, um, our enemies has no idea of the power and the relationship we have backing us with our God. We are who God says we are. Amen. What is man? that you are so mindful of him, and the son of man, the earth-born man, that you care for him, yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Good God of mine. You are the light of the world, according to Matthew 5 and 17. You are the light of Christ to the world, the revealer of Christ to the world, and the executioners and the eliminators of the devil. A city that is set on a hill, that means a champion cannot be ignored. And you are a champion. Say, I am a champion. Yes, you are. And you're going to win. Now, if I appear to be a little bit excited, I've been in a fixed fight. Amen. It was a fixed fight. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith because it's a fixed fight. We win. We can't lose because we know who we are. And just like the great pyramids in Egypt, when you walk in and look up, it says know thyself. I'm going to be back on Sunday morning, 12 noon Central Standard Time. I'm going to bring you this word. I know who I am in its entirety. You want to share this word with your friends, your family, 
You want to have everybody tune in, even tonight. Do a watch party. All of you that are members of uh, Shabbat Global Ministry Headquarters in Mississippi and Canada and Dallas, amen, with uh, Prophet Daryl Johnson and Prophetess Andrea Johnson. Um, now Faith is World Outreach. They are coming under covenant with us in May. You know, and so we got to get another flag for Dallas <laughs> because they're coming under covenant uh, with us, uh, Prophet Daryl Johnson and Prophet Andrea Johnson. But um, it is time that we grow. It's time that we build. It's time that we put our money where our mouth is. For the Bible says, where a man treasure is, there will his heart be also. If your heart is in listening to the word of faith, if your heart is listening to me on Thursday nights and my wife and I on Sundays, we want you to put your money where your mouth is because where a man treasure is, there will his heart be also. Go to Shabbat Radio 1. Shabbat Radio 1.com. And go, go make a donation. We have people to do it. You know, and they're doing it. We want you to do it. You watch us. You love the word. You love the message. Come on. Go to Shabbat Radio 1.com. And donate. I don't care if it's five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars. But give that we may continue to work the work of God in the earth. Amen. I know who I am, and this message tonight was the design with your name on it to Ambassador Joe Thomas down in Mississippi and Deacon Steve Thomas and the Madisons in South Haven, Mississippi, you know, Mary Washington in Grenada, Mississippi, all of you down there in Mississippi, we love you, we thank you so much, and um, and uh, listen, you also, those are names I'm calling out, you know, you also should support the work regardless of whether you're here or not, you know, because you can go to the donate button and you can give. You can give an offer. You can give your tithes. Amen. Uh, up in Canada, uh, Ambassador Zelma Bowen was here two weeks ago. She'll be here this weekend from Canada. That's like every other week. She's coming nine hours to come to church, you know, and, and to spend time with us. And so we're looking forward to that. And uh, all of you, if I missed anybody, please forgive me. My daughter, Jalicia Deshay Cummings in Washington, D.C. She is a member of Spirit of Faith Christian Center. Under, the, under our apostle, Michael A. Freeman and, and uh, Dr. D.D. Freeman, she told me she'd be on tonight. So, Jalicia, we love you. Thank you so much for, for staying in contact with us on a daily basis almost. And if I, if I haven't missed anything, my wife is standing at the camera. If I haven't missed anything, we're going to go off until Sunday morning. Uh, am, is it okay? Yes, sir. All right. Yaqwa Abiyya Baraka Rada. God bless you, beloved. The best has gotten better, and your best is about to get better. God bless you. I'm Apostle Jeremiah Cummings with my wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummings, and our Shih Tzu Miracle. She's here. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. See you soon.